Good afternoon and welcome to another titillating episode of Chamber TV. Today we'll spring into spring and hear tips for making the most of your business golf outings. We'll also hear about the Chamber's business insurance program and our recycling efforts. Now, here are your hosts, John Michael Bailey and Jessica Hibbard. That's what I'm talking about. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. I think our audience is really getting better each time. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Well, welcome to Chamber TV, Episode 5. If you're watching online, you already found our YouTube channel. You can also connect with us on Facebook. Just search for Frederick Chamber TV. And you can also join the conversation on Twitter. We use the Chamber TV hashtag. Great. Uh, let's jump right into Positively Frederick. Uh, this is our community blog. Uh, anyone can submit a story about something, that go something good that happened to you in Frederick County, in your everyday life. Um, and it's done via email. It's very simple. Yep. Very simple to submit. Uh, our featured story this month uh, was submitted by Melinda Cohen from Key 103 Radio. She posted a great summary of the Cake Dig, which is a fun promotional event that the radio station hosts at Colonial Jewelers in downtown Frederick. You can see some great photos from the event, people digging through cake, um, at the Positively Frederick website, which is PositivelyFrederick.org. And I think they just barely made it with the rain. I'm not sure. I think they got the dig done, and the rain came just in time to wash the cake off the sidewalk. So well, you know, people good. were wearing ponchos, and I'm not sure if it was because of the rain or because of the cake flying everywhere. But check out better. those photos. See what you see. What you think. But uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's one of the uh, events that make Frederick unique. As we all know, Frederick is very unique. Um, if you've attended a fun event or you've had a good experience uh, recently, you can, uh, like Jessica said, go to Frederick, positivelyfrederick.org and submit your uh, your experience. Question of the month. We're trying something new this month. A question uh, that you can answer online. Uh, just go to frederickchambertv.com or uh, frederickchamber.tv. <laughs> To respond to our poll. Great. Now we have to buy FrederickChamberTV.com and redirect it. No, <laughs> we work, <laughs> that, whatever. We want you to help us choose a theme for this year's expo. Last year, if our exhibitors really got into the Vegas theme, and we want to make sure that this year's event is just as much fun. So we thought it'd be pretty cool to have everybody help us choose a theme this time around. So you can see the options and weigh in online at FrederickChamber.tv. Be creative, please. We want yes, something interesting this we do. Year. There will be an other field, so delight us and surprise us with your creative ideas. Please. Uh, now we move on to Mission Central. Uh, the Chamber is successful when the local business community is successful and vice versa. It goes without saying, but we should say it anyway. Uh, that's why we look for ways to save you money. Uh, we have programs like the Energy Co-op, uh, the member-to-member -member discounts and others. Right. Um, we also have another program that's sort of a well-kept secret, but we want to change that. We've invited Christian Wright, who is Vice President of Wright Gardner Insurance, to talk to us about business insurance. <laughs> Roll on in. All right. Welcome, Christian. Thank it's good you. to have you here. Uh, I actually just learned about this this morning, so I'm, I'm just as interested as everybody else to, uh, to know. Uh, not all of us are familiar with the many options for business insurance. Uh, it's a headache sometimes. Uh, what types of policies are available for businesses, and uh, you know, is there any type of insurance that no business should be without? Um, okay. There's um, just like a home and auto insurance mm -hmm. policy. Uh, businesses, businesses have very similar policies, so you have a, you buy a policy to insure against all your property mm -hmm. that the business owns. Um, liability insurance, so that if your product causes damage or harm to someone else. Right. Um, and then workers' compensation insurance to protect of the course. employees. Sure. And that is the, the only coverage that you're required to carry by state law. So. Okay. Okay, I need to know. Well, um, how did the Chamber's business insurance program get started? Fill us in. And then what can you tell us about the history and the track record of the program? Um, in 1997, uh, we actually uh, approached the Hagerstown, Washington County Chamber of Commerce, to try to find a way to 
uh, attract new members. Mm -hmm. And everyone's interested in an insurance program that cuts their health insurance costs. But in Maryland, you can't do that. That's illegal. Sure. Wish we could, but we can't. So we looked to the property and casualty side, the business insurance side. Mm -hmm. um, so we started there, and then over the years, it just grew in popularity and success. Um, and then we launched it a few years ago with Frederick to bring value to people in Frederick. And um, it has paid over the years, since 1997, about two and a half million dollars wow. back to the participating members. Wow, wow. That's, that's a that's lot of money incredible. back in the local business community. Woo! So, yes. Woo! Yeah, so it's, a, it's, a, it's an excellent program. Um, members of the Chamber of Commerce receive a discount on their business insurance, mm -hmm. uh, so they get an upfront discount. But then the real benefit is on the back end, if the program does well that year, they receive money back in the form of a dividend. So, like, if all the business is participating, if nobody has any huge claims, mm -hmm. they'll get a dividend Absolutely. return at the end of the year. Absolutely. And, and the fact is, is that there's, there, there's a lot of business in the program, so even one or two big losses won't affect the program. Sure. Um, so, it, it really is... You know, participating members will absolutely receive, it's not guaranteed, but historically they will have received uh, more than their annual investment to join hmm. the Chamber of Commerce back. So, so did you guys hear that? Do you guys hear that? If you are a member of the Chamber, you have an opportunity to basically pay for your membership and yeah. more. So yeah. definitely an awesome program and, you know, we certainly need to get the word out about it. If, you, if you're buying insurance for your business, what, what, what kind of questions do you need to ask? I mean, what sort of information should you offer up and that sort right. of thing? Well, um, you know, writing or buying a, a business insurance policy uh, would be similar to buying a home or auto policy, personally. Okay. Um, so I'm one that, you know, I personally like to get to know who I'm buying product from. Mm -hmm. So I would, one, ask your agent. Um, you know, what experience they have in your type of business because some agents specialize in restaurants and some specialize oh, okay. in like, retail stores sure. or whatever. And then, um, so make sure that they have some type of experience. Um, always ask for references. That's always, you know, it's nice to know sure. that other people do business with that, that agent. Um, and then, you know, I, I personally like to also have my outs, have different options. So I would want to know from uh, if my agent um, has different uh, options for me, represents different okay. insurance companies, um, or has relationships with other vendors. Okay. Great. Well, you can find lots of insurance agents available on the Chamber's website. It's frederickchamber.org. Just search the directory. Uh, Wright Gardner Insurance is one of those members. And Christian, we thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's, and it's good to know that the people in the studio audience are as excited about insurance as I am. So, yes. I mean, you can hear that and the applause. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's have a little fun. Let's have, uh, let's have a little discussion about chamber factoids. It's time for an interesting chamber fact. Yep. Um, as we've mentioned before, these are great conversation starters at the next cocktail party. So listen up. Um, it's April. That means that Earth Day is coming up. So... Those of you who have been to the Chamber office know that we recycle. In fact, we're part of a business recycling program offered by Clem Environmental, which is a Chamber member company. And in the past year, I'm very pleased to report that the Chamber office has recycled more than 1,700 pounds of papers and containers. So it's a lot, um, a lot of stuff from the event. <laughs> Yes, we love the earth, and um, we're very happy to, with all the events and the people coming through our office, um, we're really pleased to offer recycling, and really glad that one of our members offers a program that works for us as a small office. So thanks to Clem Environmental, and um, thank you to everybody who visits and who recycles when they're here. Yes. yes, and keeping with that theme, let's talk about the member to member discount. Uh, we're celebrating Earth Day. A couple of uh, recycling discounts this month. That's right. E End is another chamber member that provides recycling services, um, specifically secure electronic recycling services. So you can safely recycle your computers and your unwanted electronics. Those things go out of style like 
the minute you buy them, so it's nice to know that you can dispose of them properly. E-End is offering two coupons for this month only. So the first two items under 20 pounds are free to recycle, and your first destroyed hard drive is free. So you don't have to worry about all that data on your hard drive making it into the hands of some evil information stealer. Um, you can also get 15... <laughs> that was not That's in my fish. script, by the way. <laughs> You can also get 15% off electronics recycling and data destruction. So if you have some electronics to recycle, now is a great time to do it. Visit EEND for that. And if you really want to lose some sleep, uh, Google uh, the importance of uh, PC recycling and find out all the reasons why you should. If you haven't, you'll lose some sleep. So yeah. yeah. Uh, we're also spotlighting a coupon from Liberty Mutual. Uh, some of our friends from Liberty Mutual are in the studio with us today. Thank you. auto insurance, you'll definitely want to get a quote from Liberty Mutual. They actually do my home and auto insurance, so thank you. They're offering a 10% discount for chamber members on auto insurance and up to 20% off homeowner's insurance, and this is on top of other discounts. So, like I said, definitely ask them for a quote on your insurance. And to find a full list of our member-to-member -member discount coupons, you can just visit FrederickChamber.org. Click on the red button that says member-to-member -member discounts. All right, well, I think we've covered the insurance part of the program. I think so. We're, well. Well, we're insured. We're not going to be... We're all safe and secure and insured and in good hands and Nobody's... all that stuff. Um, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Rick. Uh, <laughs> so let's move on to the front burner, shall we? Uh, try to cover some uh, important topics on Chamber TV, but uh, that doesn't mean we're all working. Play. That's right. Our Chamber Golf Scramble is coming up next <laughs> month. Yes. And we're planning to have lots of fun at that event. <laughs> but it's also a great way to make connections. Billy Cullum, the general manager at PB Dye Golf Club, is joining us today to talk about making connections on the course. Welcome, Billy. Hey! <laughs> Uh, tell us a little bit about the golf industry in Frederick County. Are there any inter are there any interesting trends or unique challenges in the golf industry, um, and how is how is the economy impacted local golf courses? Well, PB Dye is probably similar to a lot of other local businesses. Um, for us, um, some people I think cite disposable income as as uh, the number one. Uh, challenge, but mm -hmm. really time constraints for golf. Okay. Uh, so it's it's the time constraints. I'd say number one, and then two would be disposable income. Mm -hmm. So people, um, golfers, have really been or become value minded. So um, some challenges for us uh, that I think we've overcome is modifying our tee time intervals, making okay. available some early morning tee times for people to get out, mm -hmm. get a quick nine in, shower, change, get to work some late afternoon programs, giving people access to the driving range and golf course really late in the day. You wouldn't be able to sometimes even play nine holes, but you might just get out you know, for four or five holes and hit some balls. And then we've stratted, uh, staggered our, our uh, pricing structure. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've dropped it down as the day gets later the right. price gets cheaper. Uh, in the old okay. days, it was just a high rate and a twilight rate, and now we have sometimes six rates during the day. Okay. Hmm. Really interesting to hear how you guys have been flexible and that kind of thing. Well, a lot of people learn to golf for business reasons, um, and it can be a great networking opportunity. So, do you know of any amazing deals that have happened on your golf course, <laughs> and what are your tips for networking on the course? I got I uh, proposed marriage on the golf course. That was an hey, amazing. Well, that was good. <laughs> you say good deals. <laughs> that sounds like a good deal to me. <laughs> so, uh, there, there are uh, my my uh, history in golf has been pretty much in the private sector, mm -hmm. and um, for the quality, they they're very they were very strict on what business. As I got into that private sector, it changed. I think in the early days, it was wide open, but uh, strict no cell phone, laptop policy. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a lot, you know, deals going on in the golf course. Um, uh, unfortunately for me, I'm not on the golf course as much as I would like to be, <laughs> and and more uh, behind the scenes. But um, 
it is a great environment, uh, an opportunity to to uh, conduct business. Mm -hmm. um, and you know some of the things that I see that um, are are an advantage is you really get to know mm -hmm. you know your prospective client. Right. Um, so you're out with them instead of maybe a 45 minute in office formal meeting. Mm -hmm. You're out with them two and a half, three, five hours. By the time you check in, you might have lunch, right. play golf. So it's really a chance to get to know that person and form a, a really nice bond under relationship with that individual. Or figure out if you want to spend absolutely no more time with them. <laughs> <laughs> Which could be valuable as well. There are benefits on either side. Like if I went golfing with John, we'd probably never host the show again together. <laughs> um, okay, so you talked about cell phones, laptops, not having those out there. Um, you know, if you're going to be out, you know, golfing with clients or prospective clients, you obviously want to make a, a good impression. You don't want to be annoying. In terms of golf in general, are there any sort of faux pas that people should avoid? Uh, things that may not get mentioned, but you should just not do them. Good point. And for PB Dye, we're uh, public. We do have some memberships. Uh, we have a membership component, and we mm -hmm. do have some members, but we're open to the public, so we're semi-private. Right. And we do allow laptops and cell phones. Okay. Um, so, uh, but, but, uh, <laughs> so some faux pas are. Um, some people take the game very seriously. I think the most important really? thing <laughs> is to put fun first. Sure. Remember that it's a play major <laughs> recreational pursuit. Have fun with it. Um, and uh, so as far as score, penalties, that type of thing, I just put that on a back burner. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have, number one, I want to have fun today. I want to get to know this other individual, mm -hmm. build that bond and relationship. Um, you know, some things that I have seen is um, it becomes too casual. The individual might be sure. drinking a little bit too much or disclosing right. a little bit too much right, right. or uh, maybe they have a uh, anger management issue <laughs> that they're struggling with sure. by winging clubs across yeah. the green. Amazing you know, how such a small little thing can, you know, those little white golf balls can cause so much anger. Yeah, so that, that's the type of thing, you know, just to use, I guess, good common sense and, and reasoning um, when you're out there. Put put that relationship and that golfing experience first. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, if you have a bad hole, you can just put, like, a little smiley face on the score <laughs> instead of the number. And, um, and and just move on to the to the next hole. We're, you know, just putting the relationship first and that golf experience first, and not taking your own game too seriously. The purpose of of that event is to gain a new client and okay. maybe not shoot your best best round. Sure. Well, lots of organizations plan fundraiser tournaments and corporate outings, and our golf scramble, of course, is at PB Die next month. We're very excited. Do you have any tips for planning a golf event, and what can you tell us about events that you've seen that may be particularly successful? I think the best th thing to do when planning a golf event is to get in touch with the event coordinator. Mm -hmm. For us, it's Jenna Schulten, and she's awesome. Uh, attention to detail, uh, really uh, service-minded. Mm -hmm. And if you're a person who has been given the task of running the company event, and uh, so a lot of people, that's not the best uh, assignment to receive because there are so many, many details. Sponsorships, what type of format, day, time, place, uh, awards, and uh, just to mention a few. So the best thing to do is contact that event coordinator mm -hmm. and let her or him do all the work for you. Right. You'll look like a million dollars. The event will come off smooth as silk and um, you know, you make you the hero and you, you won't have any work to do. You'll just maybe follow up on a couple of few emails, double check a few things, but the best thing to do is let the, you know, if you're buying insurance, let the insurance professional sure. handle it, and for the outings, let the tournament mm -hmm. coordinator handle the business. Great. Right. Well, good, good partnership, just like we're trying to build on the golf course. Same is true for planning an event at the golf course. Thanks so much for your joining Thank us you today. Ways to improve our events and make them more fun. Um, 
our theme for our golf scramble is the Caddyshack Classic. We're really looking forward to that. And we are looking forward to having a fun theme at the Expo, too. So don't forget to give us your input on this year's Expo theme. That's our question of the month. Maybe we could carry over sort of a Bill Murray theme. I don't know, from the Caddyshack. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe. Uh, you can cast your vote. <laughs> uh, you can find links to all the topics we've discussed today on the Chamber TV website, which is frederickchamber.tv. All right. Well, a lucky member of our studio audience will win today's prize. It's an inspiring book of business stories provided by Key 103. Thank you to them. Complete with a bookmark. It, the bookmark is actually a free ticket to our lunch exchange on May 17th. So, like I said, someone in our audience is going to win that, and lucky them. Remember to cheer. Thanks for tuning in <laughs> to our fifth episode, made, made possible by the following donors and volunteers. Randy Gray is our announcer. Searsville Mansion provided refreshments for our studio audience. Prize packs for our live studio audience were provided by Wood Street, First Call Office Products, and Liberty Mutual. Thank you to everyone who's here with us at the Chamber Office this afternoon, and to you for tuning in. Join us in the live studio audience when we record our next episode, Friday, May 20th at 1 o'clock. May is Small Business Month, so we're going to talk with one of our Chamber Board members about the importance of small businesses in Frederick. We'll also have some tips on how your organization can become a bicycle-friendly business. So between now and then, we'll see you around town and online at frederickchamber.tv.